All right, so now we're on page 226, looking at number 21. Here we're still using Euler diagrams to determine whether each argument is valid or invalid. If you do not oversleep, you will not miss school. Okay, so not oversleep, not miss school. Okay, so that's just diagramming the first sentence. The second sentence says you miss school. So it means you have to be out here somewhere. And if you're outside of not oversleeping, that means you overslept. So a conclusion has to follow, so this would be a valid argument. So again, on the final exam, if you have a problem like this, you'll have to then not only pick out where if it's valid or invalid, but you also have to pick out the correct Venn diagram, sorry, Euler diagram that goes with it. Let's try number 22. Latoya buys a used car priced at $10,400. If she puts 23% down, what is her down payment? All right, let's get some additional paper here. All right, so she's putting 23% uh, down, so that's 0.23. And it's going to be times her amount, which is $10,400. So we're just going to punch that on our calculator. And that will give us $2,392. And that would be her uh, down payment. Let's try number uh, 23. Leslie gets a loan of $3,000. One year later, he pays back $3,900 to pay off the loan. What is the annual simple interest rate did he pay? All right, so we want to go ahead and take a look at our formula sheet. And we want to notice on our formula sheet for simple interest is we have this formula here. This is the one we want to use. So let's write that down. So we know that principal here was $3,000. We don't know what R is. That's what we're trying to find. We know T here is one year. And what he paid back was $3,900. Well, let's go ahead and distribute that $300. we are just going to treat this like a linear equation. So that gives us $3,900 equals $3,000 plus $3,000 R. To solve this, we need to subtract 3,000 from both sides. That gives us 900 equals 3,000 R. And then we have to divide both sides by 3,000. Now keep in mind, when we do that division, that's going to give us R as a decimal. So our last step is we're going to have to convert that into a fraction, or to, to a percent, excuse me. So that would be 0 0.3, which if we move our decimal point over two places, that would give us 30%. So that would be the uh, simple interest rate. Let's try number 24. Marcus invests 2,500 in an account that pays 8% interest compound monthly, monthly. How much does he have in the account after four years? So we're looking for the future value and it's a compound interest one. So I wanna use this one here. 
So we'll write down the formula. And this is the set amount we're putting in. It's 2,500. And our interest rate here was 8%, so that'd be 0 0.08. It's compounded um, monthly, so it ends 12. And it's sitting there for four years. And so now we're just gonna plug this thing into our calculator. Rounding it off, that would be $3,439.17. Alright, let's take a look at number 25. What is the effective annual yield on an account that pays 9% interest compounded weekly? Round to the nearest hundredth. Now, I have a clue here is that they really don't give you very much information. So we only can use the formula that has very little information you have to put in, R and N. So your interest rate here was 9%. And it's compounded weekly, so N here is going to be 52. All right, so let's go ahead and crank that in. Remember to hit your right arrow key here down, get back on the level here, and then put in your subtract one. That's going to be very important. So that's going to be 0 0.094089. Da, da, da. Remember, we have to slide the decimal point over a couple places, and they want us rounding to the nearest hundredth. So it becomes 9.41%. Take a look at number 26. Why I invest $300 um, per month in a mutual fund that historic returns 8% growth compound monthly after 25 years, how much will she have in her mutual fund? So here's a key difference. She's putting in $300 per month. So this is an annuity problem. <clears throat> so we're going to be using this formula here. So let's copy it down. Okay, so let's pick out our amounts. So we know she's putting $300 in a month. My interest rate here was 8%, so that'd be 0 0.08. She's doing it per month. And she's doing it for 25 years. All right, so let's go ahead and load that into the calculator.
my fraction key there. Oops. All right, so we should have it all in there. And then we're just going to hit enter. And again, we're going to go ahead and round to the nearest cent. So this would be $285,307.92. Let's turn the page. Take a look at number 27. How much muck does Mike have to deposit per month in account paying 6% compound, uh, sorry, 6% interest compound monthly to have 50,000 in the account after 10 years? All right, so I've got a clean sheet of paper here. Again, we're putting money in per month. But now we want to figure out how much we're putting in per month. So now we're using this formula here. So we're going to plug all those numbers in. So we want to have 50,000. Interest rate, we're going to do 0 0.06. Uh, we're doing this per month. And I think my purple's fading me on there, so let me get a different color there. And this is then raised to the NT. So this would be 12, and this is sitting there for 10 years. So now we're going to go and calculate this. And then we're going to hit enter. And this would give us $305.10. And might have to round that up to the nearest cent. <clears throat> but we're just going to follow the directions. They told us literally to round to the nearest cent, so that's what we're going to do. All right, let's try number 28. Mortgage on a home is 156000 It's financed with a 15-year fixed rate mortgage of 4.2%. What is the monthly payment? All right, so now we're doing our fixed installment loan. So I'm using this formula down here. So I'm just going to copy it down. So we have it. <clears throat> so now our principal was 156,000. Our rate was 4.2%, so we're gonna write that as a decimal. And N would be monthly, 12. And it's a 15-year fixed mortgage. <clears throat> so now we're just going to put that in our calculator.
And just keep in mind when you're doing these formulas, if it's an exponent, that's going to be a negative sign. If it's not an exponent, it's going to be subtraction. So that'd be one thousand one hundred sixty-nine dollars and sixty-one cents, and that would be the monthly payment. All right, let's look at number twenty-nine. We have a credit card calculates the interest using the average daily balance method. Below is a list of transactions that occurred during July. Okay, so we want to complete a chart and calculate the average daily balance. So I'm going to put day balance and number of days. So we have July 1st, July 7th, July 9th, July 16th, July 25th, and uh, July 31st. Previous balance was $1,869.35. On July 7th, there's a payment of $300, so let's subtract that off. July 9th, there's a charge to a restaurant of $89.36. So we're going to add that to our balance. So that's uh, $1,658.71. On July 16th, there was a charge of $206.24. So let's add that in. So that's $1,864 and 95 cents. <clears throat> On July um, 25th, there was a charge of $605.96. So it brings your balance up here. Okay. And that ends up being our balance for the remainder of the period. So if we subtract 7 minus 1, that's 6 days. It was at that balance. 9 minus 7 is 2. 16 minus 9 is 7. 25 minus 16 is 9. Now remember, I don't do 31 here. I actually go to the next day to get the next balance. It would be 32 minus 25, and that's 7. Now the rest of this, I'm going to enter in my calculator. So I'm going to my data key. I've got some old data here, so I'm going to hit my data key again, option 4. And in L1, I'm going to enter these uh, balances. And now I'm going to move over to my second column, there are these days. I'm going to have my second data, one variable stats, 
All right, I need to change my second row here, the frequency order to L2. And I'm going to calculate. And then X bar, line 2, should be my average daily balance, which is $1,936.99. All right, let's take a look at problem number 30. Get some new paper here. A credit card charges 1.6% interest per month on the average daily balance. If the unpaid balance is $1,968.23 and the average uh, daily balance is $1,789.32, find the balance due with interest. So we're going to take the 1.6 percent multiply with the average daily balance. That will give us the interest. So I'm going to change that to a decimal. And we're going to go ahead and do that multiplication. So if we round it off, that's $286.29. That's the interest. Now I need to add that to the unpaid balance. So I'm not going to add to the $1789.32. I'm going to add to the $1968.23. So we'll go ahead and add those together. And that sounds a little high for interest. Uh, let's double check it. Oh, uh, see how I entered that wrong in the calculator? So that's something you want to check. So let's redo that. I'm going to correct it here. Alright, so let's first fix this. Our interest should be $28.63. And then we're going to add that to the $1,968.23. So that would give us $1,900. $96.86. And so that would be then how much is due with interest.